very dramatic afternoon. Oh yeah? Uh, I'm fine. Oh, I love that outfit, man. Thank you. It's great. You want to see what I got? I bought, brought... No, this is, not, this is it. This is oh, it. I, I don't want anything else. Can you just wear this? This is very d -ish. Oh, this is great, man. And, this is uh, great. I also brought, like, that green... You know, I'll show you real quick. Like, just sure. like if you like these pants better, more ripped. Okay. I don't know. Okay. This looks cool, though. All right. Um, and that... No, I'll wear this. You're right. Try the other pants on just for the hell of it. Okay, okay I will. Right, just for the hell of it. And then, um... You know, I brought this T-shirt. It's like a, but I want this, this is, is my favorite. I love this. one. I love this man. No, this is like um. This is fucking great. I Teenage always, Strangler. I always liked this one, and this one was a good find. I oh, got man. this. this Without the jacket, it's incredible. <laughs> one man. I got. It's <laughs> fucking great, man. <laughs> I uh, did actually. I tried to dye my hair better. Yeah. Tunnel? <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, everything. <laughs> Steve, yeah. Steve's going to run out. He's going to get coffee. You want anything and, else? Yeah, if they could get, um, hi. Tunnel? Hello. How are you? Okay. Um, I, I have my, if you could go to the health food store and give me like an amino acid yeah. oxyquin. Like oh, very good. No, I've seen that shit. He must be calling. I, uh, this is the only thing I got left from Bridget. I stole it from her. Um, amino off. acid. <laughs> it's more Hello, Mr. What's Brady. How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, they have to be oxyquenches. Oxy it's like an antibiotic thing. It's like, um, I'll, show, I'll write it down. Because then they'll try and sell you the amino acids, and they're the wrong ones. They have to be the oxyquenches. So what happened to the phone? I'm a healthy deity. <laughs> For me. Okay, am I moving on action or are we no. holding? You're holding. Okay. Waiting for your for your Okay. okay. It'll be a tail slate again, okay? More uh, like like runs in under. Uh, whereas Fuji does like a bluish greenish shadow thing. Double X. The I don't have it on the air. Wait, they run there. Put one up double X. Hold it. They're black and white. Rock videos the guy. Okay. Are you ready? On me? Okay. Roll camera, I'll say action. Roll camera. Sorry, put my hands on the thing. And wait, wait for me. I'll, you know. Tell me when. Roll camera. Rolling. And action. Hello. Um, well, when um, the New York Dolls started, like maybe uh, six months before they were playing, like um, I think the musicians like that hung out in New York were like uh, very into fashion, you know. Like it was a competitive thing, and the dolls had the the look down the best. I remember one night I saw them at Max's, and they were more like together in maybe a year, and they had a little more money or something. I don't know, but that, I never will forget that night. They had like all the um, platform boots that you had to have made, and then they had like stuff that uh, other people wouldn't really think of putting in um, with that. Like they'd wear um, their girlfriend's clothes, you know. They get clothes anywhere. They would wear like shoes like this, like you know, tennis shoes, but they'd have big platforms on, and I don't even think they were denim, you know, and rubber. God knows what they were. It was fun for everybody. It was like um, something to do, and uh, it made like all the music sound better and more interesting. And uh, Richard Hell like uh, started a lot of this look. Like he cut his hair like uh, Johnny Rotten type haircut, the spiky one. And uh, he was playing in a group called Television, which Television had broke up at the, about the same time. I think the Dolls just broke up. The Ramones were starting. And uh, Richard and Johnny Thunder started a band with Jerry Nolan, who also left the Dolls. 
and he was like more my friend, Jerry. But, you know, they definitely like were one of the coolest groups, and I think that's the Heartbreakers. The Dolls too, but the Heartbreakers were really great. Now, I started hanging out with the Heartbreakers, and they started hanging out with me to cop and shoot dope together. Take two, action. I hope you're finally ready, because I was get, getting angry. Because I'd like to give a serious mes message message to the young Look at kids. The, camera, the young kids. <laughs> this is my message to the youth. Children, behave. <laughs> be good to your listen to Dee Dee and be good. Oh, we love you. <laughs> we do hope you be good. Be good. Can you do tie shoelaces together? <laughs> All right. Now stop. Whoa. Oh God, that's not nice to do to me. You know, I, I guess like, for me, like, um, you know, I've been, been there, you know, and um, I made it through it. Like, these are like, what I got out of it. You know, I got my tracks. They're gone. You know, I don't have to shoot dope no more. And I got my history on my, on my arms. So how should I position uh, it? Uh, like uh, more this how else way? Can we uh, like, uh, I don't want to do this, like, with him right there. There's something I want to fall on. Well, how about if I just hang out here? Me, okay? All right. Whatever you do. Hello. 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 Douglas Colvin and Dean and I have mother names, Pippi, Papa Chio. I had a casual friendship with Johnny Thunders, but I don't really couldn't say I knew him, you know. Uh, I Maybe towards the end of the group, yeah. And I can't remember if that was just because I was in the Ramones and we were checking each other. I don't know. But to make a long story short, Johnny Thunders and Jerry Nolan and Richard Hell and me, I think we got, like, really close through uh, the dope. Hey, let's cut right there. All right. You want to start can, over? Yeah, I want to start over, yeah. Yeah. Good, that worked. Mark, that was good. Mark good. Good. Yeah, it's just like good, it broke my eyes. Sounds the history of my tattoos, like this was the first one. I had had an argument with my mother because Kessie died. I, that was her dog sound. She wanted me to go bury it with her. I got really mad. She wanted to bury it in Flushing Meadow Park. And I had to go cop, and I couldn't be bothered. And anyway, we got in a big argument. And I was in London. I left like a couple of days later and went to London. I didn't ever see my mother anyway. I think I wanted to show off that I was going to London. And anyway, that's why I called her. I didn't even know about Kessie. And I was so mad at her. I went to the tattoo guy. See, this is to get this one. I wanted to get a tombstone with mother on it. And he, he wouldn't do it. And I don't know why, because he had every awful one you could get anyway, right? So uh, this was it. I was in total terror. I had to wait in a long line in this little trailer. And it's either in Camden or mm, Portobello, Market, something, you know, who knows. And uh, when I came home, Connie got really pissed off because I didn't have her name on it. And uh, I can't win, you know. You know where you're going to start, dude? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, take a deep breath. And uh, quiet, buddy, and um, roll, roll the camera. Roll the camera. Action. So, you know, um, our, our thing was like party 24 hours a day, and especially on stage. And uh, I think Thunders got uh, famous for being in a daze up there. And uh, so I guess it's like, you know, we were all misery addicts, or we all wanted to uh, create a lot of chaos so we'd have a better excuse. There was always an excuse to do dope. And a depressing show was the best excuse, you know? The show was always depressing because we brought it upon ourselves because, you know, we didn't spend the money on clothes anymore. We spent it on smack, you know? Okay. How was that for you? Jacket's very good. Yeah. Was that all right, Mark? Yes, very good. I had to fight Vera for every one of these. Finally, the psychiatrist, Dr. Yeager, I looked at him right in the eye in one of our sessions, and Vera was there, and he said, I know what you're thinking. I'm going to take her side. And I said, yeah, you know. So Vera got in a Mercedes and drove me down to Amityville. I got this one, which is the one I always wanted. And I don't know what she had against them. Poor thing.
friend, I guess. He never complains. Um, this is a Gordon Smith, and it's just, it's like a bass, so it's, it's like got the same idea. Um, it's easy to, this one's easy to, to keep going. I tried every kind you can get, and um, now I have like a harmony me meteor or something, and I have a, a Fender bass, and this one, and I have another harmony, it's two, another, another little one, and uh, that's what I got, that's all my guitars. Who I was like really getting involved in like as a friend, a total dope friendship, but it's also because I really like admired him because he was tough was Jerry Nolan. And I had an apartment, uh, well it wasn't mine, it was Deborah Harry and Chris Stein's uh, apartment that they got on welfare. And uh, they did it as a scheme to get a free apartment. And I was living up there with Tommy Ramon and we had a phone then and Jerry would call like every morning like on clockwork at 80 you want you know let's go cop and uh you know we went through some some crazy scenes like you know running down the bowery and, and freezing you know just running and running with dope in our hands and the police stopping us because they thought we had just did a b and e you know and we said no we didn't you know and then um i think i would even say no we're just going to you know get high and you know so i don't know and just i didn't know why i was always in a daze i was so casual about everything even though i wasn't like um openly discussing it it was very obvious what i was doing because i was always sleeping everyone have kids no i would not do that to a child i want a turban and i want to paint with that Maybe like um Put a diaper on my turban. I don't know. No, really, I, 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 I can't have a kid. You know? I, I don't have to have a wine thing anymore. And I'm, I don't have one. If I could have one, I would have dogged one. You know, a little kid that needed a girl boy. You know, I'd rather have a boy. You know, I like little girls, but I get too attached to them. <laughs> so, um, uh, now, these other ones I got are Born to Raise Hell. And this is like Survivor, Survive with Your Pistol. Let me see how this one's working. All our drug habits had gotten very serious. Um, they um, were fueled by, um, you know, being in the bands and like having, like, living in an illusion and uh, just, you know, wanting to have something to do, really. That was what we did. And um, it just went along with the territory. It wasn't anything we thought was anything wrong with it. We thought we should be doing it, and it was our, that's just what we did. It was normal, and that it was not normal not to do it. Now I want to have something to do. Now I want to see some glue. It's really a frustrating. Uh... It's really just a frustrating thing, you know? Because there was nothing else to do but just to sniff glue. What's we got something better to do now. now. What do you want me to say? I want all the kids to go drink ammonia or something? You know, uh, I don't want them to do that. One day, I got so rebellious, I escaped from the band. We had like six hours off and I went down to Mark Saint in Portobello, and I got like six. And I got two more on the sneak. I came home with like eight of them. And Vera like just flipped, man. I think she left for a while. I couldn't even find her. You know, usually, she was very secretive, you know. She was, she had, you know, she wouldn't dare tell me where she was going. But when she saw those tattoos, she didn't even say a word. She said, later, Dean. <laughs> 